Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation HVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring one of the most creative teams to come out of the Baltimore Regional Championships, which was the very first major of Regulation H to happen in person. This team finished in the top 16 in a tournament that had nearly 700 players, and it has a Volbeat as well as an Espathra. Volbeat is a really interesting prankster Tailwind user because it gets access to both Sunny Day as well as Rain Dance and Encore, and Espathra is a really fun Pokemon that can go for expanding force while also dropping your opponent's special defense with Lumina Crash. This team, I think, is just one of the most interesting teams to come out of the Baltimore Regional Championships. It only has special attackers, and it is a hyper-offense team that is designed to just try to win games very, very quickly, using some big surprises as well. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. If you're interested in trying out the team, the rental code is on the screen, and there's also an accompanying pokey paste down in the description below. This team utilizes some of the strongest special attackers that you can have in the format and enables them with Volbeat. Volbeat is really unique because it can both go for Sunny Day and Rain Dance, and so you have the ability to boost up your Typhlosion immediately, but you also have the ability to boost up your Primarina and Archaladon immediately. Primarina here has Weather Ball, which is really fun, as you can take advantage both of the Rain and the Sun when you use that move, and you've also got Espathra plus Indeedee. Espathra is a Pokemon that is not very common, but works really nicely on this team because, first of all, Espathra plus Indeedee as a mode alone is really powerful. Espathra is also quite fast, so you can just use it to Lumina Crash to drop your opponent's special defense immediately, allowing something like Primarina or Chalodon or Typhlosion to just pick up a knockout afterwards. Overall, you have a lot of really powerful spread moves, and the idea is to just figure out which Pokemon or set of Pokemon can attack your opponent for consistent damage and aim to just outpace them and knock them out before they can do too much against you. First of all, for some quick context, this team finished in the top 16 of the Baltimore Regional Championships, which was the very first Reg H Major, taking place in the middle of September. You can check out the results for the tournament down in the description below, but Alex ultimately finished in the top 16 and, in my opinion, had one of the most creative teams to come out of that tournament using Pokemon like Volbeat as well as Espathra. In fact, there was only one other player who brought Volbeat to the entire tournament, so for Alex to not only bring it, but also have such an incredible finish with it is really impressive. I believe this was actually Alex's best finish in a tournament yet in person, and so huge congratulations to him. I can't wait to see where his career goes from here, and to be able to use such a creative team and use it so effectively at such a big tournament is really, really impressive. If you want to learn more about the results of this tournament, by the way, I actually have a podcast with Marcus Thatcher, who is the 2016 World Champion semifinalist, as well as multi-time national and regional champion, one of the greatest VGC players of all time. We started a podcast recently, and we broke down the results of this tournament and talked about where we think the Reg H meta will go from here. So I'll link that podcast down in the description below as well. But I just want to give Alex a huge shout out, because not only did he bring and build such a creative team, he also had such an impressive finish with it at this tournament. And that is not easy in a day where there are so many good players out there and so many good teams out there. Breaking down the team, the first Pokemon to highlight, of course, is Volbeat. By the way, question of the day, like I mentioned, I've got this new podcast going on with Marcus, and so we'd like to hear what topics you'd like to hear us discuss for future episodes. The first two episodes are now out, both on YouTube as well as all the typical podcasting platforms, and it's something that I'm really excited to keep building up, and so it would really mean a lot if you check out the first two episodes. If you want to hear me yap about competitive Pokemon outside of just battles, this is really the perfect place for it. And so, yeah, let Marcus and I know what you'd like to hear us talk about in the future. Now, Volbeat. Volbeat is used here because it has the unique combination of Tailwind, Encore, as well as Dual Weather in Sunny Day and Rain Dance. Being able to set up two different weathers with Prankster is a big deal, because it makes Volbeat really flexible as a lead. I can lead Volbeat Primarina, Volbeat Typhlosion, Volbeat Archaladon, and all of those are super strong depending on what the opposing team has, right? Now, compare that to something like Whimsicott, which of course does get access to Encore, Sunny Day, and Tailwind, but doesn't have Rain Dance. Whimsicott can do a lot of the similar things, but it basically takes away a lead of Whimsicott Primarina, where you can go for like Rain Dance plus Hyper Voice, right? Or Whimsicott Archaladon. So Volbeat is being used over something like Whimsicott because you get access to the Rainy Day as Rain Dance, <laughs> not Rainy Day, as well as Sunny Day. Uh, the Volbeat here, otherwise, is just fairly bulky. You've got the Koba Berry and Dark Terra. Uh, Dark Terra can be helpful, of course, for a couple reasons. First of all, to uh, 
become immune to psychic so into psy spam for example although generally into psy spam i would actually be bringing indd uh to go for the imprison for example uh dark terra also notably allows you to uh, become immune to prankster from other pokemon right so let's say you're up against a whimsicott going for that dark terra means that they can't encore you but obviously if you're up against whimsicott it does open up a weakness to moonblast so just keep that in mind you're not going to terra volbeat most of the time anyway but just some niche use cases for it the Volbeat here is designed to enable your attackers, right? So you've got Primarina. This is Choice Specs Primarina, but this is not bulky. It's actually timid max speed, and this can really catch opponents off guard, right? Because normally Primarina's base speed, not the highest, and so people are thinking, well, even if you set up Tailwind, you're probably not going to be outpacing me. With this amount of speed investment in Tailwind, you're even outspeeding max speed dragapult for example right and so yeah pre-marina here just really fast but as a result you don't have bulk keep that in mind this thing is not going to take damage as well as you're normally used to that being said still a solid base special defense right so you'll take attacks okay but just you have to be a little bit more cautious right you might actually get one shot by moves that normally would not one shot you if you're used to really bulky pre-marina Pretty standard moveset here. The one thing to call out, of course, is the Weather Ball. By the way, you're also Steel Terra here, which is really nice defensively. Uh, weather Ball is awesome because it means you can leave Volbeat Primarina and pressure with Rain Dance into Hyper Voice, Rain Dance into Weather Ball, or Sunny Day into Weather Ball. Sunny Day into Weather Ball is probably one of my favorite surprises that you can do with this team because it allows you to just eliminate Grass type Pokemon, and Grass type Pokemon never expect to just get KO'd by Primarina. Hisu and Typhlosion here is the Charcoal set with Fire Terra. Of course, the idea is to just go for Fire Terra eruptions, um, but with Charcoal, you can actually switch your moves as well. You can have Heat Wave, obviously, over Flamethrower, but Flamethrower is just a really consistent option. Uh, it's single target. You don't have to worry about missing, which is a really big deal, because obviously, if you were to run like Heat Wave or Overheat, you can miss. So Typhlosion often just aims to deal as much damage as possible with Eruption. The third attacker is Power Herb Archaladon. Now, this Orchaladon is interesting, because of course Volbeat can set up the rain for it, but with Power Herb, you don't always need the rain, right? And so what this means is it ensures that you at least get one Electro Shot off, and if Volbeat sets up the rain, you can continue to go for those Electro Shots. This is still Stamina, some people will often run Sturdy with the Power Herb set, but this Archaladon still has some bulk, and I find that Stamina is really valuable for this, because it can just switch in on an attack, get a Stamina boost, and even with no HP and Defense bulk, Archaladon is still fairly tanky. Otherwise, you're very invested in Special Attack and Speed. Max Speed here is something that people also don't generally expect from Archaladon, and so this will allow you to outpace a lot of things that think they're going to be faster than Archaladon otherwise. And so, what's really cool about this is you also have Aura Sphere and Dragon Pulse. Aura Sphere exists on this set because you're not able to really guarantee stamina defense boosts, and so normally body press is used, but because the Archaladon isn't very bulky compared to your typical Assault Vest set, you just want something that can do consistent fighting damage. That fighting damage is really important into things like King Gambit, Incineroar, and other Dark-type Pokemon as well. Dragon Pulse is being used here because Archaladon does want to stay on the field and doesn't want to just switch out, especially if you've been able to get an Electro Shot boost, so it values multiple attacks rather than getting one really strong Draco Meteor off. The final combo on this team, of course, is Espathra plus the Indity. This Espathra is just offensive. It's designed to quickly chain speed boosts and then do a lot of damage with Lumina Crash, Expanding Force, and Dazzling Gleam. Lumina Crash, really powerful, base 80, so you already deal decent damage with it, but of course it also drops your opponent's special defense by 2. That is really scary when paired with this team, because Espathra is naturally faster here than Primarina, Typhlosion, and Artaladon, so you can Lumina Crash into an attack and just pick up a knockout onto a lot of Pokemon in the format. The Expanding Force obviously really strong when you've got NDD with the Psychic Terrain, and Dazzling Gleam just gives you good coverage. NDD here is a fairly defensive set with Follow Me, Hyper Voice, Trick Room, and Imprison. So the main thing to call out here is that you've got Imprison as well as Hyper Voice. Uh, normally you'll see like Psychic on NDD, but Hyper Voice gives you some better typing coverage, and it allows you to, of course, just uh, hit both of your opponent's Pokemon as well. Safety Goggles here, really valuable in shutting down Amoongus in particular. Uh, otherwise, I think Amoongus with the defensive Terra could be kind of annoying for this team, because anything getting put to sleep can really set you back. And so this is going to be your anti-Trick Room Pokemon, because you've got Trick Room Plus in prison, you've got the safety goggles as well. Um, but Indity, of course, can also be brought just to enable a Spathra. So, in terms of modes with the team, I think a lot of leads you can think about, but Volbeat plus one of Primarina, Espathra, our Chaladon is really strong, Indity plus Espathra is a lead combo, and then Espathra plus Primarina, Typhlosion, our Chaladon are all also really powerful as well. I think Indity can be led with the other non-Espathra Pokemon if you want to just like stop fake out on turn one, for example. People often like leading Incineroar into this team, so Indity plus Primarina, another viable lead combo where you shut down the Intimidate, you, you don't care for it, obviously you shut down fake out. Uh, 
uh, and then pre marina can just pressure with the super effective damage uh, hyper voice immediately into incineroar for example and so uh, i think ndd plus the other leads it's a little bit scarier right because uh, you don't have will be to just like set up the speed so that you can just outpace your opponent but it is something to consider as well in terms of weaknesses, the first thing to call out is that this is a hyper offense team and it only uses special attackers. So if you've got ways to reduce special damage, that is going to go a long way. Light screen, for example, as well as moves that can reduce special attacking damage like Snarl or Struggle Bug from Volcarona are really powerful. Alex ran into what was probably the worst matchup possible in top 16, which was Grim Snarl with Light Clay and dual screens as well as Struggle Bug, Cover Cloak, Volcarona. And like the Grim plus Volcarona lead was just basically impossible for this team to deal with. The idea was that Alex's opponent, Dawei, was able to use Grim plus Volk early and then Porygon 2 plus Ursaluna in the end game. Trick Room can also be really difficult for this team. Now, you've got NED with the Trick Room and the Imprison, right? But if you go up against this team and you see it and you're using Trick Room, people often now are anticipating Imprison from NED. So what they'll do is they'll not Trick Room in the early game, knock out NED, and then click Trick Room. I had one practice game where I was up against a Porygon 2 Ursa Luna team, and for example, they led Porygon 2 plus Incineroar. I knocked out Incineroar, but then they brought out Golden Go, they knocked out my NED, and then they set up Trick Room afterwards. And so a well-timed Trick Room can be really good into this team as well. Why? Guard obviously can be pretty scary because you've got so many spread moves and Hyper Voice, Dazzling Gleam, Expanding Force, Dazzling Gleam, Eruption here as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, for our Chaladon, I think you got to be careful because you're using Power Herb and you don't have uh, Pelipper, right? So you do have Rain Dance from Volby, but if you blow your Electro Shot and into a Protect, for example, or into something that doesn't take very much damage, keep in mind that it's not as easy to use that Electro Shot as the Assault Vest our Chaladons that other people often use with Rain and Pelipper in particular, for example. And then for Indity plus the Spathra, like you really have to worry about um, Dark type Pokemon, right? Like this combo just does very little into Dark type Pokemon. Something like Assault Vest King Gambit, complete nightmare. In general, for this team, I think a lot of what you have to be careful about are Pokemon that resist uh, your moves and a defensive Terra as well. So what I like to do is bait out that Terra and then use like my offense really afterwards. And so sometimes it's not about just going with your strongest Pokemon immediately. It's about baiting out a Terra so that your strongest Pokemon then can hit that Pokemon better and can clean up your opponent team but those are just a couple things to watch out for what is this okay we've got kilowatch roll which i don't think i've seen since scarlet and violet vgc first came out alone nine tails golden go incineroar torterra and quackable very interesting Uh, Volbeat here, I feel like being able to control the weather should be really nice. I'm thinking Volbeat Primarina lead. I want Typhlosion, but I might use that in the back. Spathra is interesting to me. What if I went Volbeat Typhlosion? What is this week to? It's just so vulnerable to Incineroar, I think, that I want Typhlosion in the back. So, I'll go Volbeat, Primarina, Typhlosion, Archaladon. I could see myself bringing a Spathra in one of the slots, though, over one of these three attackers. Volbeat, Primarina. Typhlosion. Yeah, I'm actually down to bring Espathra over Typhlosion. Or sorry, over Archaladon. I don't know. I mean, I think Archaladon obviously is really good here, but having fast Lumina Crash, um, like even without NDD, I think Espathra is interesting here. But yeah, I think like one of the ways you can play with this team is just Volbeat plus triple attacker, right? So you figure out what the best lead is. So they go with Kilowattro and Torterra. Okay. Wide guard is definitely something to respect right now. No lie, I think we can do something really interesting here. Sunny day, fire, uh, steel Terra, so that Thunderbolt isn't super effective, and Weather Ball into Torterra. That probably doesn't KO though. No, it does. Uh, as long as they're not a Salt Vested, it should KO, right? All right, I'm down. Let's send it. 
I want to get rid of Torterra because I think Wide Guard is actually a really, really big problem for us here. I also don't think that my opponent should feel threatened by Pre Marina right now, given their lead. Where's the Terra? And then the next turn I can go for Tailwind, right? And then set up for Typhlosion in the back. Yep, there's Wide Guard. Cool. So we play around that. We'll beat sets up the sunny day. Huh. Discharge. Okay. It's fine as long as we're not getting para into full para. Okay, nice. Doesn't do that much to pre marina. Here's weather ball into Torterra. And that, folks, is a one hit knockout and one of the coolest things you can do with this team. Making pre marina effective even in the sun. So that's obviously a really good start for us. Now I can set up Tailwind. They're going to bring out Incineroar, which is fine. You can obviously pressure Flare Blitz onto Pre Marina. I actually think I want to set up Tailwind and then Rain Dance. Because uh, Pre Marina now in the rain looks really good now that we've eliminated Torterra. Oh, I could Encore their Kilowattro. I think probably still safer to just guarantee Tailwind up right now, though. I could also just Rain Dance right now. I don't hate that option. Yeah. Wait. Why don't I actually just Rain Dance and Weather Ball? They'll probably click Fake Out here, but it means I don't even have to switch out. Okay. They'll just Fake Out into Volbeat. That's fine. Air Slash here, but we have the Koba Berry, which is awesome. Nice. And Weather Ball into Instant, which is okay. Yeah, I think here I'm happy to Rain Dance and Weather Ball. Let's see if they anticipate this, because if not, and we get the knockout, I'm just up 3-2, right? And then I have this Bathra plus Typhlosion in the back, which is a pretty good combo. It's really interesting to see Kilowattro, though, just in general. It's uh, also a Tailwind user. Obviously, flying electric coverage is pretty unique. Would have been nicer to... Okay, they do anticipate this, so nicely done. They are going to switch out the Incineroar. And that is going to be Alolan Ninetales coming out. Okay, fine by me. So, we'll beat now. We'll change the weather into rain. They're going to air slash once more into Volbeat. That's fine. I mainly have to be a little bit careful right now, and I would probably want to switch out Pre-Marina and then bring it back out. Okay, never mind that. Just got a one-hit knockout. We've just used Weather Ball, Pre-Marina, plus Volbeat in this game, which is so awesome. So, what do I want to bring out now? I think I'm okay going Espathra. They're going to have to click Fake Out, in my opinion, into Pre-Marina, so I can just swap Pre-Marina out this next turn. Into Typhlosion. Uh, our child on over Typhlosion actually would have been better in this endgame, I think. As uh, another anti-Incineroar Pokemon. Yeah, what do I want to do here? I think I'm down to click Lumina Crash here into Kil Kilowatt Roll, and then switch Typhlosion in. The one thing that I risk myself in doing this is like a double up onto a Spathra, fake out plus an attack, but I think it's fine even if they were to do that, because then I just get a free switch in back into Pre-Marina if you actually knock me out. And yeah, I think you have to target Pre-Marina here. Cool, we just Air Slash a Spathra. we don't flinch, nice. There's Lumina Crash. That does a ridiculous amount of damage. Okay, nice. It does activate competitive, but it's fine. Um, with the speed boost. Well, we should be faster than you now. I guess you could theoretically protect. So I will protect here. And go for... Protect and Shadow Ball in case they don't protect and end up targeting a Spathra. Because Pre Marina will always win against Incineroar. 
The one thing to note here is that my opponent still hasn't committed Terra yet. Oh wow, they just go for Air Slash on Typhlosion, but we survive. Cool. Even with the competitive boost. Um, but it would have been fine, basically. I think the one thing that could have been a little bit scary is because they actually were smart and didn't protect that turn, if they were to protect the next turn. Because I would just go for, like, Lumina Crash, right, into Hyper Voice. Um, the question is, like, if an instant has Grass Terra, for example, that allowed them to survive the turn. So I can just go for Dazzling Gleam now, and Shadow Ball, and then Primarina just comes out. But this was a really fun game. The fact that we were able to use Volbeat to set up the sun to knock out Torterra, and then the rain was, uh, I think, a really unique strategy with the Primarina in particular. So Gleam into Shadow Ball, not much damage. They're going to go for Snarl. That looks like Assault Vest Incineroar to me. So I am curious about the Terra type on this. But now we get good old Primarina back in. Cool. And how many turns of rain do we have left? Only one. So I will go for Lumina Crash here in case you do Terra. And Hyper Voice. And Insane can't win 1v2 from this spot. You can Snarl. like, But even if you Grass Terra Snarl, I think the Lumina Crash dropping your special defense plus Hyper Voice itself might just get the knockout even if you're a Terra that resists water. And actually, I think it's probably better to just Moonblast in this spot. Um, but I don't really think it makes a difference here in the end. Because, yeah. So it is going to be the Terra here. Typhlosion be able to hang on from the Kilowatt or even at plus two was clutch. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to activate competitive. Um, and yeah, they end up just being Ghost Terra here. So I think Hyper Voice would still get the knockout single target in range. Choice Specs boosted. But Lumina Crash just ensures that we get the KO. Cool. Drop your special defense. And Hyper Voice comes out. But how cool was Weather Ball here? And I think this was the perfect game to highlight why Volby is a really interesting Pokemon. The fact that like, you can go for Sunny Day as well as Rain Dance and then be able to change Weather Ball's typing is really nice. The fact we got a one-hit knockout onto the Alolan Ninetales with Weather Ball was absolutely nuts as well. So, yeah, don't discount the strength of a Primarina Weather Ball in Rain, right? It gives it a valuable single-target water type attack, which is really nice, because otherwise we're just clicking Hyper Voice, right? Um, but that was definitely... I'm sure a big surprise to my opponent, and this is why I wanted to eliminate Torterra, because Wide Guard's actually really annoying for this team. And even though we won, I think I still could have improved my play. I think bringing Archaladon over Typhlosion may have been a little bit better, um, since Archaladon would have been much better into Incineroar, uh, as well as the Kilowatt roll, whereas like, Typhlosion offered very little. Um, I do think Typhlosion looked good on paper, because it gave me another answer into Torterra, which otherwise could be a little bit scary. Um, but yeah, like if my opponent were to bring the same four, I would very heavily consider dropping Typhlosion for Archaladon. Okay, we've got the Sneasler here with Golden Go, Ursaluna, Dragonite, Hisuian Arc, and Archaladon. So, dual steel types. I'm Sneasler here. I wonder if it's even on Burden, honestly. It could be just Sash. Um, uh, Indeedy, like, is nice in enabling a Spathro, but I don't know if I love it otherwise. It kind of just sits on the field and doesn't do very much. This could be an interesting game to go, like, Espathra plus one of our Pokemon, and then just, like, Chain Lumina Crash. Because, honestly, Espathra plus Triple Offense doesn't look bad here. I'm not sure I need Weather in this one, but I do think Tailwind from Volbeat is nice. Okay, I think here I might go Espathra plus Archaladon as the lead. This has Lumina Crash into, you know, an attack from our child on it can basically pressure a knockout onto everything. The question is whether or not I want back Volbeat for Tailwind plus a Weather. If I do, I have to commit to obviously one of Primarina and Typhlosion. I think I will go Volbeat and Primarina. Yeah. I don't know, I think you could definitely just go with Primarina and Typhlosion here, but I do like the idea of Volbeat because um, I think speed control is nice to have here. And, you know, setting up the rain for Primarina I think also valuable. Our child on plus a Sue and Arcanine, okay. Fine by me. Uh, K 
Okay. Wouldn't be surprised. I mean, this is Rockhead. This might be Sturdy. Turn 1, I'm thinking of just double protecting to see what they want to go for. Uh, this could also bait out Electro Shot immediately from our Chaladon. There's the Protects. They didn't Terra turn 1. They just Flare Blitz here into my Archaladon. Okay, and Draco it. Nope, we do bait out the Electro Shot. That's good. Okay. Yep, so now your power up's consumed. Double up onto my Archaladon. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we're modest max speed, but I suspect we might speed tie here. And if that's the case, that would not be ideal. I could say, you know what, I think you're going to Flare Blitz plus go for a Dragon type attack into me. And so what I could do is switch our Chaladon out into Pre-Marina to take that. But they might double up onto a Spathra, which would feel really bad. I lean towards wanting to go for Lumina Crash here, plus Aura Sphere. But yeah, I'm I'm really worried about losing the 50-50 speed tie here, assuming they're also modest max. They could also be timid our Chaladon. And they did end up swapping Flare Blitz into a Spathra there, okay. Yep. Okay, they made the double up. Yeah. I don't mind that too much then, at least, I guess, because I get a free switch in into Volby, and I can set up Tailwind now. I'm assuming they're Focus Sash on Hisuian Arc. We just featured Rockhead Sash Arc, which I think is a really cool set. But yeah, if we had moved first there with our child on, I think I would have been in really nice shape. Sneezler comes out now. Okay. You could fake out. Obviously, I want to click Tailwind right now. I want to Tailwind Aura Sphere. Sneasler is a pretty big threat, though. I'm wondering if it's Sash on Burden. Sash on Burden would be really scary. Hmm. They don't click Fake Out, so they might just be close combat. Flare Blitz, like, double up onto... Aura Sphere is good damage, but they're going to Dire Claw into Volbeat. That's fine. Paralysis. Okay, let's see if they double up into that slot. Nope. Flare Blitz into Archaladon. Okay. Okay, wait. This is huge. If you let me Encore your Sneasler, then you're just stuck into Dire Claw for the remainder of... Not the remainder of the game for a couple turns, so... Arcanine can switch out right now. Golden Go could switch in. I don't mind Electroshotting, maybe? Catching Golden Go in would be, actually be huge. Okay, so I'm going to Encore Electroshot. I'm also happy to just, like... Okay, they Extreme Speed. We survive. Please don't get paralyzed. Nice! Volby gets Encore. That's huge. Now you're stuck in a Dire Claw. You get Electro Shot off, so I get boosted now. And because it's Steel Terra Pre Marina, it means that I can Steel Terra and suddenly have two things that are immune to Dire Claw. I wouldn't mind Volbeat fainting here um, to give me the free switch into Pre Marina immediately. So Arcanine faints. Okay, it is going to be the Volbeat target. Sweet. So now it's a 2v1 effectively. That played out really well. I don't know if it's worth getting the special attack boost there, though, immediately. But let's see what their final Pokemon is. Dragonite. Okay. Dragonite, Dragonite, Dragonite. I have two turns of Tailwind. Two turns of Encore. Obviously, they're going to Dire Claw into Pre-Marina, so I think we definitely Terra Pre-Marina here. Hmm. 
I mean, I want to just Terra Moonblast into Dragonite and Dragon Pulse into it. But I think Dragonite obviously is going to want to Terra here. So the question is, what item is your Dragonite and does your Terra save you? If it's not Assault Vested, for example, I still feel decent. And Steel Terra means Dire Claw is completely ineffective this turn. Okay, here's the Dragonite Terra. Terra Fairy. Oh, okay. That is not ideal. Moonblast here. We get a crit. They obviously can't Dire Claw this turn into us. Stomping. Does that KO us? Ooh, we survive. Okay, nice. I think I need to KO this right now, though. Actually, do I? Because Moonblast here should just KO Dragonite. Dragon Pulse would bring this down to Sash. If I double up onto Sneasler, KO you. Dragonite here shouldn't be able to pick up a double KO, but then if you stomping pre Marina, that's a problem. So I think I need to use pre Marina, yeah, into Dragonite this turn. Moonblast into you, Dragon Pulse into Sneasler. Yeah, they go for E speed, but we survive. Nice. Oh, this was so close. I wonder if the critical hit made a difference, because I'm assuming they were um, multi skilled Dragonite anyway. Yeah, Moonblast gets the KO. Encore was so good in this one. But in the end, I think uh, burning the Electro Shot actually wasn't ideal, because I would have been able to Electro Shot plus Moonblast into Dragonite, which would have been better. But yeah. Volbeat demonstrating exactly why you would want to use this Pokemon. Tail and Peter's out, but now it's a 2v1. Sneasler can't knock out both Pokemon, so we just Moonblast here and Dragon Pulse here. There was also the decision to maybe click Dazzling Gleam with Primarina instead. Um, but yeah, Fairy Terra Dragonite is something I've run into more frequently against really high ladder opponents from Japan in particular, so it feels like something that's been trending upwards. The critical hit, obviously, uh, quite lucky in just dealing more damage and meant that I, you know, potentially didn't need to, to launch two more attacks into the Dragonite, uh, right? Because uh, as a result, just two Moonblasts got the knockout, whereas without the crit, I might have needed another uh, attack, right? And so, yeah, that was a really, really wild game. Um... I think, yeah, the, the main thing was the Electro Shot ultimately. Like, I was thinking maybe they would consider switching out. I didn't know if Golden Goal was in the back. Dragon, I obviously can switch into Aura Sphere as well. But if I had actually conserved Electro Shot, it would have given me the extra damage that I needed, where it's like Electro Shot, Moonblast, Moonblast should always KO the Dragonite, right? And, and cover for, I guess, most Terras, although Steel Terra Dragonite theoretically could be a thing. That would have given me some trouble. So, yeah. Uh, Dragonite, I find, is actually one of the hardest Pokemon to play in Best of One because you don't know its ability, its item, and. Uh, I've ran into, like, full support Dragonite before as well, um, and, you know, not getting any damage off that turn was uh, not ideal. I think one other thing I guess I could have considered was actually Dragon Pulsing into Sneasler and Moonblasting into Dragonite, because then, like, I'm always going to knock out Sneasler eventually, so maybe splitting my damage there was good, because, like, Dragonite we knew was probably going to Terra, Sneasler isn't going to Terra from this spot, and, like, it, I end up ultimately wasting an attack with our Chaladon, right? But if I didn't waste that attack, then... Um, I, I, mean, I was mainly thinking, like, if I didn't get the critical hit, how, how would I win that game, right? So, but yeah, Fairy Terra, Dragonite's just something that I think is really hard to cover for. Um, although, like I said, it is something that I've been running into more frequently, so that's not something that should come as, like, a total surprise now. That's a Glyce score. Whimsicott, Gliscor, Tyranitar, Chaladon, and Nileap Electabuzz. Very cool team. Titar is scary, but we can Rain Dance into Aura Sphere against it. If I'm my opponent, I would go Titar and our Chaladon. I'd probably bring Whimsicott as well. Primarina is not bad into those. Our Chaladon's not bad into those. Um, I don't know if I love Espathra here. Because of Titar. So Volby. I think Whimsicott plus Archaladon definitely will lead to worry about. Tyranitar, Gliscor. I'm gonna go Volby, Primarina. I think this one, Volby, Primarina, Archaladon, Typhlosion is fine. 
I don't like Espathra being so useless into Tyranitar, and this is not the right matchup for Indidi. Although, one of the funniest things you can do with this Indidi is use Imprison, not to imprison Trick Room, because my opponent's not going to set up Trick Room here, but to imprison Follow Me from Electabuzz. But I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> like, Electabuzz is not the you know primary threat here. Glyscore is the Pokemon I'm most worried of, or, or curious about. That's a Pokemon that's seen very little play just in VGC, not only in this game but VGC history. So I'm yeah, that's the one I'm most fascinated by. Uh, it's just kind of a wild card. I don't know what to expect from it. But yep, in this game I think it's interesting because Volby being able to control the weather is nice. Uh, given that we see our Chalanon without rain on their side, we should expect the... Oh, okay, Whimsicott plus Tyranitar. I do not mind that. So turn one is interesting, because, like, the... I could actually Dark Terra Volbeat. I'm not sure Rock Slide KOs me anyway. Basically, I want to Rain Dance plus Hyper Voice, but I also want to set up a Tailwind after that. Hmm. Bull beats max HP 60 defense. Got our child on in the back. I'm gonna Terra, Rain Dance, Hyper Voice. I, I really want to make sure that I get Tailwind up in this game, and I also really want to get uh, the Rain up this game, or this turn. So. I, I just don't know the Tyranitar's item. I think if Volbeat were to faint on turn one, Tyranitar could also carry Stone Edge, right? So, yeah, I just want to show Tyranitar respect. Or Flying Terra, Terra Blast, all options. Yeah, so the idea here is I don't need to set up Tail in this turn. Now I get it up a turn later, so I get an extra turn to work with. The only thing I'm really worried about now is getting flinched. Yeah, they just Rock Slide. Nice, no flinch. Volbeat actually took that pretty well, so I would have been able to... Are they focused, Sash? Wow, that's really interesting. Okay. Sash Titar. Ah, it did 78 damage, so... Yeah, I mean, the good thing is now I can Tailwind. Wait, Loki, I could also Encore, but... Tailwind... I mean, assuming they're max speed and special attack as well, then, which is interesting... Sorry, max speed, max attack T-Tar. But I think Tailwind Hyper Voice here is fine. And the good thing is with Dark Terra, you can't go for, for example, Encore onto Volbeat. So now I get an extra turn of Tailwind. Relative to my opponent. Okay, they just Moonblast us. Yep. And we even survived that. Nice. And Primarina is faster. Awesome. So we're up 4-2 now. Yeah, the main idea, once again, behind Dark Terra Volbeat is I just don't know this Tyranitar set. It could be Life Orb, it could be Choice Band, and I really wanted to both change the weather and set up Tailwind, right? So now we have an extra turn of Tailwind relative to our opponent. They're already down to their final two Pokemon. Electabuzz comes out, and Annihilate comes out, okay. Encore on this is obviously quite nice. Wouldn't be surprised if they go for a Fighting-type attack. I would love to get an Encore off. I think, though, what I could do is just Sunny Day now and bring out Typhlosion. Change the weather. Sunny Day, and I'm going to switch an Arch on here. Uh, mainly because, at this point, we should expect Electabuzz to want to target down the Primarina slot with, say, Thunderbolt. But if I go for Sunny Day here, I get Typhlosion out and our Chaladon out. I just have so much offense, and I'll have an extra turn of Tailwind once again. So, right now, the speeds are, or the Tailwinds are both set up, right? But there will eventually be one key turn will definitely be faster. They're going to Terra here, okay? Terra Annihilate. Okay, Terra Electric. That's interesting. Don't think I've seen that before. Alright, well, Volbeat's done everything in this game for me. It has set up the rain, it's set up Tailwind. They're gonna go for Electric Terra Thunder Punch now into the Archaladon slot. Okay. We'll take it. 
Stamina allows us to survive that, and they're going to go for Electro Web here as well. Cool. So, uh, our Chaladon now in a pretty good spot, I would say, since it's got in plus two defense already. So, I'll take that. Electro Buzz was slower than the Annihilate, which is interesting. I'm going to just bring out Typhlosion now. And I will go for Eruption here. Actually, oh, there's still two turns of Tail and one turn, so I actually don't mind protecting this turn with Typhlosion. And going for Electroshot here to boost my special attack. Okay. And they just Rage Fist into us. Okay, that's fine by me. Cool. And Electro Web, yep. And it just gives me yet another defense boost here. I think it probably was fine to just click Eruption there, honestly, since our Typhlosion is just Timid max speed. But this also basically confirms to me that we should just be faster anyway. And I, I was wondering if there was, like, randomly, I don't know, Choice Scarf Annihilate. So it's, like, because I knew I had an extra turn of Tailwind might as well. I don't know if I love the Electroshot into Annihilate here, but I figured, like, that's the main offensive threat at this point in the game. So now I can just go for Eruption here and Dragon Pulse into Electabuzz. They should protect Annihilate Electro Web. Or double protect. But they're not going to protect, okay? There's Eruption. Ooh! Oh, it's Assault Vest Annihilate, right? Did I just get crit? No, that was the game. Without the crit, we just Dragon Pulse Electabuzz. Oh no. Because now they get to Electroweb me. Oh, that really sucks. Um... Uh, yeah, basically, like, if the crit doesn't happen there, obviously our Chaladon is just so boosted up, and then Dragon Pulse KOs this, and then, yeah, it's like a 3v1 against Annihilate, but now I might lose. Um, it's a question of, do I protect Typhlosion? I could just attack here. Basically, one option is Protect, and Dazzling Gleam. The other would be to just straight up attack with Typhlosion. Uh, basically feels like a 50-50, right? I'm gonna protect. Oh, man. We had this one. <sighs> and they read it. They went for Thunder Punch. Uh, basically, yeah, like, I would have to go for Flamethrower there into the Annihilate slot, but that's okay. I don't mind losing a game like this. Like, I think we were in such a good spot. Um, but the Assault Vest... Electric Terra was like the perfect set for them to have, but they still needed the crit to get to that spot, right? Um, if I had clicked Flamethrower there, then it would have knocked out the Annihilate, and I think Typhlosion wins the 1v1 against Electabuzz. It's a question of whether or not I could take two single target um, Electro Webs, but yeah. That is the downside of obviously being slower than your opponent. Um, maybe I could have just, I don't know, the turn that I protected with the Typhlosion, I could have just gone for Eruption there. Uh, the, the other downside was both of my opponent's Pokemon survived that turn, so I actually think Electroshot into Electabuzz would have been better to get the chip damage so that Eruption finishes it off. Um, the fact that both Pokemon survived Eruption was not ideal for us, but yeah. This is an example of a game where, like, if the critical hit doesn't happen, I think we should just win, And but even with that, like, we can reflect on where we could have improved our plan, like I just said. Electroshot into the Electabuzz would have been better because I, like, don't give an immediate Rage Fist stack into an Annihilate. But yeah, I was just thinking... I, like, I'm impressed by how bulky their Pokemon were, right? Even in the sun, Charcoal Boosted Eruption, not able to get a knockout onto either. So, yeah, it just feels bad that our um, our Chaladon had stacked up all these stamina boosts and then Drain Punch. Because the, the Drain Punch crit also allowed them to recover more, right? But we also could have potentially won this game if I went for the Flamethrower ultimately into the Annihilate. Um, and maybe I should have just had the conviction to do that, right? It's one of those things where it's like... One person is obviously just going to get it right, the other one is going to get it wrong. Um, 
But since I had already reveal protect, I think it is more likely my opponent expects me to protect in that situation. So yeah, that was a heartbreaker of a game, but I think it's one in which we were in a very good spot. So I still don't really regret how I played most of it. Um, but the this uh, Annihilate step with the Electric Terra, just one crit onto the Archaladon, suddenly the game was open back open. And uh, the reason for that was because of them having Electroweb on the Electabuzz as well, rather than Thunderbolt. Uh, Electroweb offering my opponent that speed control was a really big deal. Uh, because otherwise, yeah, the Typhlosion would just outpace my opponent, right, uh, after the Tailwind on my end had expired as well. Alright, we've got Hydreigon, Whimsicott, Garchomp, Palmont, Farigraph, as well as Archaladon. So we both have Tailwind. Espathra looks like he can go kind of crazy here with Dazzling Gleam and Expanding Force. So I'm definitely intrigued by that. I'm honestly thinking about just a Spathra Indity, set up Psychic Train immediately for a Spathra. And then we'll basically look to get Volbeat in afterwards to set up Tailwind. Because I want to start getting our speed boosts with this sooner than later. And then we have Dazzling Gleam with this, which is awesome. Volbeat in the back. What do I want as the last one? I feel like Primarina makes sense. Our Chowdown with Dragon Pulse though isn't terrible either, but... I'm down for Primarino into a triple dragon team. So I think with this team, there are a lot of lead combos. You can go Volbeat with any of your special attackers. You can go Indity plus Espathra. You can go even Indity plus one of your attackers, right? So like, for example, Indity Primarina, Indity Typhlosion, and the idea is you use Indity to like follow me while your other Pokemon gets a really strong attack off. I think Indity plus the attackers is really valuable when you think you're going to go up against Fake Out, right? So specifically, imagine uh, going up against Incineroar lead. Uh, Indity plus the Primarina, for example, can be really nasty into that. But yeah, I think basically when I use this team, I ask myself, you know, what does my opponent not have great responses to? And in this one, I think the answer is just Bathra plus Indity because they don't have their own terrain control. So they're going to lead Dual Dragon here immediately into a Spathra, which obviously has that Dazzling Gleam. So, not bad. What do I want to do turn one? Set a Psychic Terrain. I honestly think we can swap Indity right out into Volbeat. Dazzling Gleam here. I'm intrigued by Dazzling Gleam, Fairy Terra, and then Follow Me, or Hyper Voice. I don't think we need a Terra Espathra. Dazzling Gleam, super effective. I maybe could see myself tearing Primarina. Yeah, I think I'm actually down to just send it. Dazzling Gleam, Terra, and Hyper Voice here. I also thought about maybe going for, like, Protect on turn 1 with the Spathra, but I'm hoping here I can maybe just catch my opponent off guard with Dazzling. Uh, Hydreigon's not going for a Terra, which is a good sign. Nice. The Spathra just gets Dazzling Gleam off immediately. Doesn't get the KO. It's because they're Citrus Berry, bulky Hydreigon. That's interesting. Okay. They're gonna go for an Earthquake here. Yep. Okay. Crits are Espathra. But that brings us down to Sash. Life Orb? Yep. <laughs> Nasty plot Hydreigon. Okay. But I get the Dazzling Gleam off there. Or sorry, the Hyper Voice off there. Obviously, they're super vulnerable to Dazzling right now, so you would think they maybe kind of protect or switch out. I'm down to Expanding Force this turn, and then switch in Volbeat. I think Dazzling is probably just the safer option, but if you're my opponent, I think you'd want to, like, maybe Terra to get around Dazzling, dealing super effective damage onto something. Looks like they're not going to switch here. Volbeat comes out. Yep, here indeed is the Terra. Terra Hydreigon would make me very happy to see. Yeah, into like Steel. <laughs> Let's go with Spathra. Nice. Yep, that's what I was hoping for. Like, I figured they might just like try to get greedy here, right? Because they've already boosted up their Hydreigon. But now we just get the knockout onto Hydreigon and Volbeat can just set up Tailwind. 
So here's Expanding Force. Beautiful. And that should just knock out the Hydreigon now. Yep. It's one of those scenarios where, like, I figured my opponent thinks, okay, if I just Terra and I survive with one HP here, I can get a huge attack off, and surely you're just going to click Dazzling Gleam again. So I was willing to take that risk here, and it pays off, I think, really heavily for us. So let's see what they bring out now. Perfect. It's Whimsicott. Works for me. We've got Involbeat out here. I don't even necessarily need a Tailwind this turn. Expanding Force here is safe. I can set up Weather with Volbeat right now, preemptively. For, um, but their last one could be our Chowdon, so I think I want to be a little bit careful there. So I'm going to Expanding Force here. Yeah, Expanding Force. And... I don't even necessarily want to Tailwind, but eh, I think we probably still should. It's one of those where, yeah, trading Tailwinds here is perfectly fine by me. Cool. So Volbeat sets up Tailwind. And now I get to see what their last one is, right? So, like, let's say we see our Chaladon, then it could be interesting to actually click... Oh my gosh, Expanding Force does so much damage there. And then, like, yeah, the Espatha right now just keeps getting the speed boost, right? So we just outpace our opponent. I definitely wasn't expecting Citrus Nasty Plot Hydreigon. I didn't know if it would even be able to survive that Dazzling Gleam to begin with. But here's their final Pokemon, and it's going to be Palmot. Cool. Well, that's perfect, because you can't stop Expanding Force. So, yeah, I'm happy to just click Expanding Force here. Still two turns of Psychic Terrain. Volbeat right now I don't really need out on the field. I mean, I don't really see how they stop this, honestly. So, Expanding Force right now into Palmot. And I am going to click Rain Dance to set up the Primarina in the back. They try to Encore, but Psychic Terrain is up. Yeah, so you can't even go for that. Okay, Volbeat's now set up the Rain Dance. Nice. <laughs> Nice, and then, yeah, I mean, Expanding Force here. I'm curious if it was Sash Palmot. It was Sash Palmot, okay. But, yeah, I mean, it was a 4v1 at this point, right? So Palmot gets an attack off, but then I just get a free switch in. Yeah. And the other thing is, because they committed Terra, if you go for uh, Shock with Palmot, then you get rid of it, uh, and then you can't go for it again, and then so Primarina can just come out and completely wall you afterwards, right? So, yeah, with... Us, I mean, we were up 4-1 with Palma being at 1 HP. I think technically the better play may have been to actually swap out the Volbeat. Uh, I don't really know if it makes too much of a difference, but yeah, the key turn in this game was expecting them to potentially Terra defensively with the uh, Hydreigon and then actually sniping it with Expanding Force. Like, that was obviously a pretty risky play, but it ended up paying off super well for us. Okay, we are up against Hard Trick Room here, although they do have the... Torkoal plus the Hisuian Luligan. Indidi, Hatterene, Dusclops plus Ursaluna. So safety goggles, Indidi here with the Imprison is really good. And we can expand and force our way probably with the Spathra. Wolbeat's still interesting because I can use it to Rain Dance. Oh, that's actually really intriguing. Um, hmm. I'm down for the Indy Espathra lead. Primarina and Volbeat in the back. Because I think a Primarina in rain looks really disgusting against my opponent's team. So I'm basically bringing Volbeat just because it has rain dance, but that alone, in my opinion, is a good enough reason to bring it. But I'm leading Indy Espathra here because it, if they, you know, go for Lilligan plus Torkoal, uh, I can just go for Follow Me into Expanding Force, for example. Uh, with this lead, I can just go for a Imprison and a Expanding Force. I could go for Lumina Crash as well, actually. I guess that's interesting. Psychic Seed on the Unity. Yep. Yeah, so I'm down to Imprison here. I 
think I'm down to just imprison expanding force turn one. We won't do that much damage with expanding force, but that's okay. I think NDD plus Typhlosion or Pre-Marina also would have been a pretty interesting lead. Because I would have exerted a little bit more offensive pressure. They just go for follow me, which is perfect. And if they're trying to trick room, I mean, this is obviously a super good turn one for us. As Ispathra now just gets some free damage off. Not bad. Even though they resisted, it, it's still decent. And now NDD gets some prison off. Cool. Okay, they will click Dazzling Gleam here. So nicely done by them. As it's Life Orb as well. That's fine, though. So now I can go for Hyper Voice. I wonder if Lumina Crash Hyper Voice actually knocks out the Hatterene. And they go for a Helping Hand, so if this actually got the knockout, that would be huge. Let's see. I think it, it's really close. I might have needed to Terra there to, uh, and guarantee it. Oh, it does get the KO. Let's go. That's huge. Nice. Okay. So let's see what they bring out now. They obviously can't set up Trick Room yet still. If we get one more knockout, I think we'll be in really good shape. Because even if Indy faints, like... And they just bring out Ursa Luna. Okay, that works for me. Ursa Luna out. We've got Pre-Marine in the back. Obviously, you have to be worried about me clicking Expanding Force right now. Should expect this to maybe Terra. What do I want to do this turn? If I were my opponent, I would try to knock out the Espathra right now and protect Ursa Luna, right? I think I want to just Hyper Voice this turn. Hyper Voice this turn and protect with Espathra. They can't Trick Room right now since Imprison is still active, but it looks like they're just going to commit the Terra immediately. That's interesting, okay. Terror Saluna into what? Ghost. Oh, I didn't feel like they needed to go for the Terror. Oh, but it, I guess that does make them immune to Hyper Voice this turn, so, okay. Spathra will protect. Yeah, they're not going to protect here, so could have gone for damage this turn, but that's fine. They're just going to Dazzling Gleam. Yep. And I don't mind getting a free switch in here into Pre-Marina, but they just end up facading into a Spathro, okay. That's fine. Still can't Trick Room critically. I think if I get a Lumina Crash into this, then Hyper Voice should just be able to finish it off, right? They could Earthquake right now. I am down to go for Hyper Voice here and Lumina Crash into Ursa Luna. I wonder if Lumina Crash, like, I'm mainly curious if I can knock out the Unity, but with the special defense boost, I wouldn't expect it to. Yeah. Okay, Lumina Crash, Hyper Voice here. A lot of damage. Nice. Now I think, uh, yeah, Spec Dazzling Gleam from Pre Marine. I might not even need to click Hyper Voice. They're gonna gleam us here. Yep. We actually survive with both. Wow. And Facade. Cool. You can see how this Indity is just such a awesome Pokemon for two reasons, right? Not only does it enable the Espathra, but it also enables the. Cool. Um, it just stops Psychic. Spam teams, right? So we can bring out Pre-Marina now. Great. I would guess that their last one is Torkoal, so it makes sense for them to switch in Torkoal right now. Uh, I think the one way I could lose this game is if they switched this out into Torkoal. Or sorry, this out into Torkoal and then actually knocked out Pre-Marina. So I don't mind switching Volby out finally. And going for Spec Dazzling Gleam now that you're at minus two special defense. 
So I'm hoping, like, we win the game, I think, here, basically, if they switch NDD out into Torkoal and just attack. Yeah. Unless, like, Gleam does not KO minus two Spideff Ursa Luna, which would be surprising. It is indeed Torkoal is the last one. Bingo. And now we use Volbeat to set up the rain, and you cannot do anything into Primarina. So this was as perfect as possible. I'm really happy that we got to showcase both Espathra as well as the Volbeat in this end game. Uh, having Volbeat to change the weather here just basically guarantees us the game. Perfect. And I brought it specifically so that I could set up rain in this game, right? So now we can just go for Rain Dance with you. And I could switch out into my NED here, but I think it's fine. Actually, I think it's probably still better to switch out. So let's Rain Dance and then switch into NED here. Okay, they just end up forfeiting. But Volbeat here basically would have always sealed us the game because of Rain Dance specifically. And so, yeah, the idea there is once I switch out, your Torkoal is just really useless, right? Torkoal in rain is just not going to be able to do anything, and then I just bring Primarina back out and then just click Hyper Voice. I thought about just clicking Spec Dazzling Gleam there, because, like, with the rain setup, you're not doing much damage to Primarina anyway, and, um, you know, Gleam, I would think, would knock out NDD. Um, but I figured, you know, Rain Dance and Switch Out is also fine, because, like, a double up should never knock out Primarina. It, even if you crit and even if you set up Trick Room, all I need is for Primarina to come back in, and then one Hyper Voice just wins the game from there. So, yeah. Even though they didn't get caught off guard by Imprison, I think the really big turn in this game was the Lumina Crash into Hyper Voice, knocking out Hatterene. Because uh, if Hatterene survived there, that could have been pretty scary for us. And one way we could have done a little bit more damage, obviously, was go for Psychic Terra with the Spathra. We didn't actually end up really needing Terra in this game, so I actually think that was something worth considering, um, just because Steel Terra, not really that important on Primarina. Although, I think the one place where you could utilize it is if you think Facade's going to go into that slot. But in the end, uh, very happy to demonstrate both the Espathra as well as Volbeat. Like, even though Volbeat didn't get to click Rain Dance, unfortunately, in that endgame, uh, having Volbeat ensured us the victory, basically. The teams today have certainly been crazy. Kilowattro, Alola, Ninetales, Hisuinar, Gambit, Swamper, and Sinistra. Wow. Well, there's Gambit, which isn't great for Spathry and DD. Like, I, I, if I can knock out Gambit, Espathra is so good, I think, with Expanding Force. Volbeat. If I lead into DS Bathroom, they're probably just switching Gambit immediately. So I don't think it's an effective lead. Just a single Dark type makes it not effective, in my opinion. But I could go Volbeat plus something. Or sorry, Espathra plus something. Our Chalodon looks sick here. Yeah, what if I go Espathra with our Chalodon? Marina plus NDD. My goal here is to use Espathra plus child and just combo KOs. I don't know. Volbeat's not bad here. It is interesting because I can use it to control the weather and they have Ninetales. I'm thinking, do you even bring Ninetales because you know I have Volbeat? A lot of mind games. But yeah, I don't know. It'd be great if we could bait out King Gambit early and then KO it with Aura Sphere. Swamper, Kilowatt Roll. Okay, well, this is new territory. I'd rather eliminate Kilowatt Roll, but I wonder if turn 1 I can get rid of Swamper with a double up of Lumina Crash. Dragon Pulse. Oh, I just get Tailwinded on, though, which isn't surprising. We're still faster with the Spathra. But I'm getting hit by an Earthquake here. Yeah, that's not really that great. I don't think this trade is worth it on turn one. But I definitely didn't want to Terra our Chalodon, because if I Grass Terra, they can just Air Slash me afterwards. Um, but maybe I did need Volbeat just to match Tailwind here.
Because the problem is now I'm just going to be slower. Yeah. Uh... I'm also just, yeah, intrigued by Kilowatcher usage picking up. The fact that we fought two in one video slash recording session makes me think there's something in this Pokemon. And they did bring Ninetales, so yeah, the game I dropped Volbeat in uh, very clearly would have been helpful. Uh, this is tough, because even if I protect, I'm still getting outpaced. I might actually need to try to set up Trick Room somehow. So I think right now I want to protect... Get an Indeedy for free, then set up Trick Room with Indeedy. And then use Primarina under Trick Room. So protect this turn. And I'll sacrifice our Chaladon. <sighs> so here's the thing I, I also could. Um, just switch our Chaladon out into Indy, but I think I want Indy as healthy as possible to make sure I get Trick Room up. Yeah, they're gonna Air Slash Blizzard, I assume. I also don't want to switch in Indy and have it uh, get frozen by Blizzard. So, yep, the idea here is to get Specs Pre Marina under Trick Room right now, since my opponent has gone the Tailwind route. And even though we get a speed boost, we are still going to be slower, which is scary. Kill Watcher was really fast. Okay. Indity is out. Now I'm hoping to get Trick Room up. I will... Might as well go for Expanding Force here and Trick Room. And then the goal is, if we set up Trick Room, just spam Hyper Voice with our Pokemon and try to deal as much damage as possible under Trick Room. Swamper being eliminated is a pretty big deal because it does get access to Wide Guard. But yeah, with this team, you generally want to outpace your opponent. Oh, nice. They actually air slash us bathroom. Okay. I was worried they would go for Indy and then, like, f you know, flinch us. Uh, freeze here would be very bad. It's a lot of damage. Okay, no freeze. Good. That's exactly why I didn't want to switch in Indy earlier, by the way, because I didn't want, like,. You know, another Blizzard plus Air Slash into that slot, and Indity may have just fainted, so... We get Primarina out. Now the question is, I have to commit to locking into a move between Hyper Voice and Dazzling Gleam. I think it should just be Hyper Voice here. Yeah, we're just gonna double Hyper Voice. Ah, <sighs> the alternative was to go for Follow Me there, but I want a Hyper Voice to cover for Focus Ash Kilowatt Roll. Maybe I was a little greedy with my Terra this turn, though. I think it was maybe worth Terraing here on the Primarina so that I don't get hit by Freeze Dry, which is super effective. We also have no bulk on Primarina, which is scary. Kilowatch will switches. I would guess King Gambit. Yep. Uh, and here's the problem now. They have King Gambit. Oh, but they don't protect with Ninetales. Okay. We don't get the KO, and they get Aurora Veil up. Oh, that's really bad. And Tailwind Peter's out, so King Gambit now will outpace me under Trick Room. Okay, well, it's still maybe possible to win, because I have Fairy Terra, so I can Fairy Terra follow me to survive. Kowtow Cleave. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think uh, Kilowatcher was a really big threat here. Kill... Uh, Crazy, Kilowatcher Swamper, not a lead I would have ever covered for. Fundamentally, what was the issue? My opponent was able to outpace me for a lot of this game. I didn't bring Volbeat. Volbeat did have the Koba Berry for Kilowatch Roll. I think something like Volbeat Primarina would have been okay, but honestly, I mean, if Swampert had Wide Guard, uh, this was actually going to be really tough no matter what. Uh, and Swampert is a really effective lead into Typhlosion, right? So I didn't feel comfortable bringing that, but Typhlosion was pretty good into the other Pokemon my opponent brought. Ninetales goes for Protect, which is also smart. But yeah, I, I think the problem is now with Aurora Veil having been set up, I, yeah, I can't win this one. I think if they didn't get the Aurora Veil up and I KO'd uh, Ninetales, we actually had a decent shot at this one. 
Because Kilowattrol would come back out, and then I can go for the Fairy Terra double Hyper Voice to knock out Kilowattrol. And Primarina actually matches up pretty well into King Gambit, but now you can see with the Roar Veil, with the Primarina not getting the KO, or Ninetales hanging on. Yeah, I think we are a little cooked. I mean, I assume they're just going to Iron Head me now. Yeah. Oh, but they do target Primarina. Wait, if I actually got a critical hit here, it would be doable. It is single target Hyper Voice now. Hold on. Is this doable? Does this KO? Uh, they look like they're Assault Vest, so Assault Vest plus Aurora Veil. Oh. What a roller coaster of emotions. Watro comes out. Yeah, it's the last in our trick room. Even if we had gotten that knockout, Killer Watro could just protect. So unless it didn't have protect, we didn't have a way to win. But I guess we don't know Killer Watro's set. So we should still go for Follow Me Hyper Voice here. If I had gone for Follow Me last turn, I would have lost the NDD. I'd still need to rely on a critical hit on Killer Watro anyway, right? But I'm assuming they're Focus Sash and they have Protect, so... I don't think there's actually a way we win this game, but without actually knowing Kilowattro's moveset, don't want to forfeit yet. That's one way that you could lose a game that uh, actually is won, by the way. Uh, forfeiting when you assume your opponent has a standard set. They don't go for Protect here, but I assume they have Focus Sash. But either way, right, it's like imagine if you uh, think your opponent has an item or you think they have Protect and they don't actually have that item or Protect, or really just like a move that you anticipate them having, right? You gotta like at least make them show you they have it. Hyper Voice did do so much there. Yeah, I'm so curious how this would have played out if the Ninetales did go down, but Discharge will finish things off here. So, I gotta say, I'm very intrigued by the new Kilowatt meta. Uh, the last one we fought against did not set up Tailwind, this one did, and it put in a lot of work being able to outpace me. Uh, so, I don't know. Volbeat would have helped, but Volbeat with what would be the question? Because Typhlosion, terrible into Swamper. Our Chalodon, not good into Swamper. I mean, the reality is that Swamper was really good into us, right? So, like, that's why I felt like I needed Primarina, and, like, we were able to eliminate it, but I traded Swamper for a lot of damage and Tailwind, which didn't feel very good. Um, so, yeah, this is your QDU Swamper. Uh, it was a starter Pokemon that was not in Day 2 of the Baltimore Regional Championships when there were 12 starters, I believe, in uh, that tournament. So, this Pokemon, turns out, is still... Pretty darn viable. Alright, we've got Dragonite, Garchomp, Golden Go, Whimsicott, Incin, and Amoongus for this one. So Incin plus Golden Go, I'd expect to be brought out here to counter Spath or NDD. I think we can go with our Volbeat to match Tailwind from Whimsicott. Spath is still interesting to me. I like Primarina lead. I think it just puts on so much offensive pressure. So it might just be Volbeat Primarina. Volbeat Primarina Typhlosion Archaladon. What if I actually don't bring Typhlosion? Because, like, I would expect Defensive Terra, Golden Go, Dragonite, Incin. And what if I went to Spathra instead to drop their special defenses? That's interesting. I'm down to try that out. Let's see. I think the main thing to think about with Volbeat here is, do I want to click Tailwind immediately? Because often the answer is no, but I didn't want to just bring it in the back either. But if it's going to be Dragonite Garchomp, then... Tailwind Dazzling Gleam does seem decent here. Uh, it's probably going to force out a Terra from their end. It, it almost makes me want a Hyper Voice here. Because I think it's like, you can switch in, for example, like, what if Dragonite goes into Golden Go and Garchomp just protects on turn 1, right? So I'm actually thinking about clicking Hyper Voice. But I do think Dazzling Gleam might just be too good to pass up on. I, I just, there's no way you let yourself get Gleam here is the thing. So I'm going to Hyper Voice Tailwind turn 1. I expect Steel Terra, maybe even Fire Terra, or a switch into Golden Go. So there's a switch. Could be Instant as well. 
Oh, chance of being Whimsicott. Okay. And just E-Speed into Pre-Marina. That looks like Choice Band damage to me, so that doesn't feel great. Um, Dazzling Gleam would have actually totally worked out fine here. They'll E-Speed again, but I can go it into our Chaladon now. Go into our Chaladon and click Rain Dance. But this is getting kind of scary. I was, yeah, um, certainly expecting a defensive Terra somewhere, but Specs Gleam would have just been fine there. Okay, Dragonite pivots out. Back into Garchomp. It's Golden Ghost, the fourth, yeah. Whoa, Whimsicott protects. Now this is interesting because I have Encore with the Volbeat. So I would like to Encore this right now. Electroshot into Golden Go. Encore into Whims. If it's Protect, I'm assuming it's Focus Sash as well. Otherwise, like Covert Cloak, I think those sets normally don't run Protect. Good switch by Whims. Back out into Dragonite. Encore fails here. I've got Electroshot into Golden Go, which is big. I mean, the key thing here is they haven't set up Tailwind, right? So I do have the speed advantage, but I might be eating up a spec Shadow Ball here. So much damage into Golden Go. Just make it rain, okay. Get a stamina boost. Golden Go now can switch out. It's the last turn of Tailwind. If I were them, I would try to extreme speed finish off Volbeat right now. So I would like to drag Impulse into Dragonite here and then switch Volbeat out to sacrifice Pre Marina, ideally. So then I can get Tailwind up again. I'd be happy... Eh, Golden Ghost staying in, switching out. Either way. Yeah, it is going to switch. You could switch in a Chomp here to take Electroshot. Yeah. I thought about Dragon Pulsing that slot. That would have been pretty sweet. But it is going to be E-Speed to finish off Pre Marina. Yep. D-Pulse to finish off D-Knight. Okay. When Peter's out, bring Volbeat back in. We can trade Tailwinds. Got a Spather in the end game, which is not a bad option. Have a defense boost on this. Hera, Grass. Hmm. I'm definitely tailwinding with Whimsicott. I do think I should be terroring here. Terra, Grass into Garchomp and Tailwind. And because you can't really protect here, right? If you protect, I just Encore you. Yeah, so they're going to Terra as well. Terra Ground. Terra Ground is fine. Um, not what I'd like to see though, just because it's more damage for them. I think a big question I also have is the Whimsicott. But like, is Spathra in Tailwind will outpace? So if I get a Dragon Pulse off, I think Lumina Crash should finish off Garchomp. So that's what I'm going for right now. Sash, the Spathra in the back might be the ace that we need. Stomping Tantrum, does it KO us? Grass Terra and a defense boost. I wouldn't expect it to. Okay, it really doesn't. <laughs> Good, just making sure. 
and their life orb. So now I get plus one D-Pulse in return. Almost KOs. Ah, it's like so close to... I mean, I'll survive another attack from Garchomp, so I think here we want to... <sighs> Does plus two Electroshock KO whims? They know I have Encore. I don't want to get Moonblasted though, so I feel like I need Encore Whimsicott. I am going to Encore and Electroshot you. Okay. Uh, it might be Mentor Whims. They're going to Encore us. And I am going to Encore their Encore. Oh, you can't Encore Encore, actually, right? Yeah. It's one of those weird mechanics. Uh, I could have switched out there then, maybe? I mean, this is still fine, though, right? I think I'm still going to just go for Pulse. Encore? To, like, I just want to make sure Whimsicott does not get Moonblast off right now. So Chomp switches out, okay? So they give up Golden Go. Are they going for Encore? Oh! That's actually a mechanic I didn't know about. Oh, that was smart. You Encore just so that I can't Encore your Encore the subsequent turn. That was really cool. That was really, really cool. How would I have even played around that? The only way could have gotten out. I didn't know that mechanic. Hmm. Okay, I'm a Lumina Crash Golden Go here. Wow. Wait, but they targeted Volby. Volby didn't have anything to contribute in this game. So if Lumina Crash KOs Golden Go, I think we win. Right? You're Encored into Moonblast now. Espathra has Dazzling Gleam. You can't Tailwind. You would think Garchomp protects here, right? So the question is, how much does two do two Moonblasts do to us? But I don't like Volbeat. Actually, had nothing left to do in the game for me there. So that was big. Let we that turn happened. I don't know how much Moonblast does to Espathra. So the question here is, do I want to read into Garchomp Protect this turn and go for Lumina Crash into Whimsicott? The alternative is just clicking Dazzling Gleam. I don't know if Dazzling Gleam is even a two-hit knockout on a Whimsicott, which is the problem. But I don't want to throw the game and let Garchomp actually attack me. So, I will just Gleam here. And Garchomp doesn't protect, so I think we win. Gleam also looked like it might have just been a two-hit knockout. So now the question is whether or not Moonblast was a two-hit KO onto us. It, it, oh, it did exactly 85, so the answer is yes, it could obviously have gotten the KO, but now we just Lumina Crash. That was a crazy game. Wow. What the heck. Um, I thought we were in a really good spot with Encore, but the Encoring against the Encore mechanics so that Moonblast could happen the turn after just totally tripped me up. Um, but, like, I don't really think I had that much counterplay to, like, because we didn't even know they had Encore until... Uh, we saw it immediately, right? And so, with no knowledge of the Whimsicott set having Encore, it made it a lot more difficult as well. And yeah, um, the way to have gotten around that would have been to switch in the Espathra a little bit earlier. Uh, like, the downside for me in this game is that Volbeat just doesn't do damage, right? I don't have any offense onto it, but the Moonblast targeting Volbeat meant that Espathra was able to survive for an extra turn. Um, it would have been really crazy if, yeah, it came down to whether or not, like, two Moonblasts got the KO, because the first one did exactly half of our health, but that was such a crazy game.
Okay, we've got Whimsicott, Archaladon, Annihilate, Ursaluna, Blood Moon, Flamigo, Chandler. Interesting. Their answer against the Spathra would be Archaladon. So if we can eliminate that, it opens the door for a Spathra. Hmm. I'm also intrigued by something like a Spathra or Chaladon as my lead. Nudity could be effective here, but I don't know. Like, the question is would I really want to commit to the Aspathra mode over the offense mode of this? Because I could totally just go Volby, Archaladon, match their Tailwind, and then go from there. I could also go with this lead with Volby, but I don't want Volby and Indity in the back. Mm. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with Spathra, Archaladon, Indity, Primarina. I am wary about Typhlosion here. They have Chandelure, they have Flamigo, so Chandelure has Flash Fire, Flamigo has Wide Guard. There's just too many things I think that give us trouble. And they have Ursaluna Blood Moon, right? Whimsicott or Chaladon, cool. So yeah, what I was thinking here is we can aggressively target down there our Chaladon. But what would they do? Tailwind Electroshot here? Because I want to just go for Lumina Crash or a Sphere. The problem is they might just Electroshot into my... Oh, they're going to Terra. That's not good. It might be Terra Electric, though. Huh? Okay, Terra Water limbs. That, I didn't see coming. Mm, but I'm okay with it. Misty Terrain. They didn't even Tailwind. If... Is my on faster here? Because if so, this would just be like a nightmare turn one for them. Oh, we might have lost a speed tie there. I don't know if they're timid or modest, but that would have been so good for us. Because I would have just gotten in the knockout immediately. Misty Terrain Water Terror is fascinating, though. So, uh, obviously, that's going to be a pretty big counter to Aspathra, specifically. Um, but, yeah. I'm still fine with this, because I KO our Chaladon, and they committed a Terra. They didn't actually get that much off this turn, other than bringing me down to Sash. But, I wouldn't be surprised if they were modest as well. So, if we lost a Speed Tie, that feels really sad, because winning a Speed Tie there would have been so instrumental for us. But now I can just Electroshot the Whimsicott. The Water Terra there, you know, I assume to get around Flash Cannon hitting them for super effective damage. Ursa Luna now comes out, okay. So you could obviously Tailwind. I really wonder if this is Vacuum Wave. Got Indity Primarina in the back. There's a big part of me that wants to do this. Psychic Terra, Expanding Force. Switch into Indie D. Because I do have the speed boost on the... This bathroom already. And it seems pretty crazy to Terra 1 HP Pokemon, obviously, but let's see. Because I don't think they'll click Misty Terrain again right now, especially after revealing it. I think you should just go for Tailwind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. GG. Okay, it doesn't pick up the KO, but it's fine, because now... You can Misty Terrain with this, but I can follow me. 
So I can Lumina crash into you. Follow me. I, I think the thing with the Suspathra is it can feel like a really high variance Pokemon because there's something that like, can go wrong with it. But the fact that we've been able to do what we've been able to do with this Pokemon is absolutely bonkers. Um, that felt so satisfying. That game definitely did not play how I expected it to, like starting from turn one. Um, but yeah, <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much, as always, for joining me. It was really fun to feature this Volbeat team, and we had a lot of great games and a lot of fun and interesting teams in this one, in my opinion. So yeah, huge thank you to Alex for building and sharing this team. Congratulations to him once again for top 16 at regionals. Thanks to you all, as always, for watching, and I'll catch you all soon. All right, peace.